to everyone. If you have suggestions or ideas of who you'd like to see on a panel or topics you'd like us to discuss, please shoot them over to me or to Gustavo. I'm tina.jones at kw.com. And Gustavo, tell us I'm, your... I am Gustavo at bridgemls.com. And I'm going to put it on the chat also so that you guys can uh, send me out the email. And I'll put it your email as well, Tina. Yeah, tina.jones at kw.com. Just send me suggestions for who you'd like to see on the panel and topics you'd like us to cover. So uh, today, I'm almost giddy because some of my favorite people are on this panel. We have the top producing agents throughout the Alameda County area. We got them. And it's David and Andrew Gunderman who have the Gunderman Group. And uh, in 2019, they did 185 million. And then we have Anthony Riggins with Sotheby's. And in 2019, he did 83 million. These are some massive producers, some brilliant businessmen, and so happy to have you guys. Welcome and thank you for being on this panel. Uh, our topic that we're gonna talk about today is mindset. And it seems interesting, but we, I counted today, we are, uh, today is day 74, I believe, day 74 and that we've been shelter in place. Now, essential workers, we have had a little more liberty than others, but overall, we're supposed to stick, or, stick close to the house and shops aren't open and all of that. So I have noticed since we started, 74 is about two and a half months, my mindset changed over the periods. And I was like, highly adrenalized and then I kind of went oh this is a lot people are dying and then started coming back this isn't so bad we can handle it and then it got to this is getting old <laughs> I'm done and knowing that we still have risk and that we still have to be very careful I just think it's important to hear from top top people like David Andrew and Anthony what they're doing so um, for introductions, I do want to tell you one of my favorite things about these people. So Anthony, as we, he's known throughout, but one of my favorite things he told me is as a kid, he won an Eddie Monst Monster contest on a local TV station. <laughs> that great? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. He also, one of my other favorite things, there's a lot of great things he told me. We could spend the whole hour just talking about him. He does Secret Santa for a thousand Oakland kids each year. Yeah. That's still my heart. Um, Andrew and David, so Andrew, oh, he's, he's my buddy. And, you know, we've done a lot of self-actualization work and, you know, self-improvement, all that spiritual work. But one of my favorite things about him is he was a ballet dancer with the American Ballet Theater in New York and also worked at Studio 52, 54, 54, that's how he, 54, thank <laughs> you. So he was in his heyday, he was in front and center in all of the very exciting times in New York. David, accomplished stage actor in New York, Sondheim plays, all of that. And the two of them came out here and started a family. And I loved it when they were on the stage at a big convention with 18,000 people. And, and people were ooing and on when they talked about they just wanted to find a way that they could show up to be good fathers to their children. Ah, kills me. So uh, thank you guys for being here. I'm going to start with the first question. Let me get to that right here. Um, so... How did you, and we'll start with you, Anthony, and we'll keep the, the answers, well, anyways, how did this pandemic and shelter in place affect you initially, and how is it affecting you now? First of all, your drawing of the curve for yourself is what I experienced, but getting into more detail, I remember I was at a broker's tour for a really great house on Trussell Glen had a kind of a quieter Sunday open house because we were starting to hear about the pandemic. 
in early February. And then on Brokers Tour, I thought, where are the agents? No one's come in to see this cute house at a magic price point below one, two. And then Jackie Kerr comes in the room and she's masked and she's gloved. So that was my first visual of the gloves. And she comes in and she goes, have you had any agents here? And I said, no. And she said, Governor Newsom has just issued orders of shelter in place and real estate agents can no longer have an open house or a broker's tour. So there was my, there was my introduction into it. And I was just like picking up my A-frames. Is this it? What am I going to do? Who just took my world away from me? And uh, that's it. And I drove home and I'm like home early before one o'clock ended. And I was like, Lee, who's my husband and a retired obstetrician gynecologist. And I said, Lee, what am I going to do? We were, I had to leave my house. We have new rules in place. How am I going to survive in this world? That probably came about two weeks later, how am I going to survive in the world? Because you got caught up in the news, right? We were all addicts to the news. And then, um, then there was opening up a bit. Uh, my mindset started to change to, uh-oh, my phone started ringing. And it was nine listings in a two-week period that postponed on their own being downsizers to the spring of 2021. So then I'm like, oh, this is getting really bad. I've just lost nine listings, average probably potential sales price at 2.1. I go, there's X amount of income out the door until next year. Um, thankfully, there's money in the bank around here. I didn't have that pressure on me, which a lot of people here and here on this phone call might have on them. But it was interesting to see like, wow, the news just took the business away from me. And that was the beginning part of it. How is it affecting you now? And, and what are you doing to navigate? Wow, it has changed. It has changed, I would say, in the last 30 days. Buyers started waking up. And by the way, kudos to my buyer's agent, Robert Jones, who did $42.5 million last year representing buyers. He's never stopped. So while I was here at home lamenting that, you know, here goes my listings. When's the, there's three more on the horizon, whenever that is going to be, and having ongoing discussions. But when I started seeing that Robert was still doing it and wasn't having issues with masks, gloves, writing the winning offer. So he's on the deal board two times a week, three times a week. So I realized, okay, something's happening out there in the marketplace and it's being buyer driven, maybe not so much seller driven with giving us inventory. So Robert's putting himself on the deal board all the time was kind of the hope that was behind uh, the team and that we are going to come out of this if these buyers are risking, you know, their own health when the numbers were still growing with COVID. And so that was my inspiration. So he was actually my inspiration that, okay, it's going to turn around for me and listings as well. Where I am today, I've replaced the nine listings. I've moved one of them to coming on this year. So there's eight that are still in the postponing part. And where I am, I've replaced those nine with nine more new listings coming up in the next 30 days. So how quickly it has changed on that going upscale that you did. So these are all new people. Um, some I know, some came by referrals. Um, some call, call from my marketing efforts and it's just come from all different places. So it's very good to know that I'm kind of hitting on all cylinders not just geographic farming for which I've known. Um, so I feel very confident today. My team feels very confident today. And during that process, the team had to remain tight during the worst of times watching the news. So we did not stop our team meetings every Thursday afternoon at two o'clock. We kept those going. Christine, who's sitting across from me, my seven-year marketing uh, manager and great graphic designer, does all of my online and print marketing, we have never stopped 
during this entire process of marketing. So we never let that go. So to me, probably not surprised that we did get nine new listings to replace the eight, because I'm gonna include one of those that was in the nine postponed. So we've replaced, we've replaced those and I still have those in the future. So it's a much better feeling right now. I feel like it's back to the old days in some ways. Um, you know, tell me when to shut up and I'm talking too much, but I feel like it's, we're back to the old days. I did not feel like it's sad, lonely, depression, those things, as far as real estate goes. It may be happening in individuals' homes, I understand that. But as far as the client base that you have in the higher end price points and in the good neighborhoods of Oakland, Piedmont, Berkeley, and Alameda, I'm not sure that the buying pool has slowed themselves down. I think they still have their jobs. And so when you're in those markets, which I purposely chose those markets, I am diversified in price points. I'm not stuck at 2.5 to 4 million. You never, as a former banker myself, you never want to have accounts receivable in one price point. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm very happy where we are. I think Christine's very happy, my assistant, um, Robert, we're all on the same page, so we're elevated high right now. So that's where we are today. Great, thank you. David, Andrew, same thing to you guys. You know, initially, how did this affect you? And um, how's it affecting you now? And, and how have you navigated through that? Well, Tina, <laughs> I'm drawn to disasters. Um, <laughs> something you don't know about me is when I was younger, I was an EMT um, in college. Um, so I've always really been drawn to disasters. I was at Mount St. Helens 40, you married me. 40 years ago, 40 <laughs> years ago, um, watching it blow up. Um, and, and I'm drawn to disasters for a couple of reasons. One, because they force you to be awake. You have to be thinking quickly, you have to be nimble, you have to respond and, and have, have, have a, an engagement with, with something that is, is not in, in, in the normal you know, course of the day, right? So for me, um, COVID coming along really um, was a moment that thrilled me in some ways. I mean, it's a horrible, horrible disaster and people are suffering and you know, we have had some personal tragedy even on our team with the loss of um, a spouse of one of our team members. Um, we are, um, you know, dealing with all of that on a personal level, but on a, a more organic, bigger level. I mean, we're, we're forced to be awake. We're forced to be awake as human beings. We're forced to evaluate, reevaluate what's important to each one of us in, in terms of our relationships, in terms of our family, in terms of our clients, in terms of our colleagues and our work. And this is not going away. So, you know, we, we are going to benefit, I think, ultimately in our geographic area, you know, with a very quick rebound relative to our industry, which is wonderful. But again, you know, one of the things I love about our industry is every transaction is unique, right? We're forced to be awake as, as, as business, um, business entities in our, in our business, right? We have to interact in, in, in instances and with people. Every, 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 every relationship is unique. Every transaction is unique, correct? So now we're kind of looking at our industry in a whole new way. How are we going to do business? How do we maintain those relationships? How do we foster new ways to do business? So how do we support one another in a collegial manner? Because there's going to be some agents who are going to you know need more support there are going to be price points in our geographic areas that are going to struggle um, as Anthony was saying the higher end is kind of okay but you know we're we're going to see a lot of transformation in our community and it's my hope you know that as an industry and as people working together we we really support we really engage in new ways in our community to support one another because you know we're going to have another wave Alameda County is I think number one in, in, in resurgence of COVID right now. So we are really vulnerable and we need to really be nimble and awake and doing some deep work and understanding how we can be most effective to support one another in this industry and as human beings. 
David, you want to talk more about what's happened with our team? Well, I'll just I'll just say this. I agree with everything. I was going to say the same thing, which is that which is I think real estate is is essentially a nimble business. I think we all feel that we all have to constantly pivot just day to day. And so so a, a bigger cultural shift is actually somewhat. Um, it should be right in our wheelhouse as real estate agents to have to pivot and shift and all that sort of stuff. That's part of that's part of the game. And and we're going to emerge from this stronger than when we came into it, which is exciting for me because it because it gave us a breath, it gave us a moment to do things that are constantly back burner. It gave us so much, uh, you know, an opportunity to really move into more digital and more video and learn new technologies. So I think it's been thrilling from that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I, I agree with you. I mean, Andrew and I part of part of our thing, and I think probably most people on this call is we just thrive on change. Like part of why we're in in, just, in real estate is I I can't do a routine. I can't be in a day to day job. Like that spirit of entrepreneurship and that spirit of like change and plate spinning and always being on your on you know on on your toes is exciting to me and this brought that forth in a big way a, a way that unfortunately was married to a great deal of suffering, uh, but from a professional level this is just a one huge opportunity for people who 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 want to engage with it and to, and tackle it, so I think that's a really cool aspect of it. Um, it was a little it was also a little scary at first to Anthony's point like shedding business was frightening. Um, but that, that, you know, struggle makes you stronger. I think anybody who's experienced any life struggles knows that if you, if you, you know, steal, steal yourself, struggle makes you stronger if you, if you, if you attack it head on. So, um, so that's what we tried to do is attack it head on while really galvanizing our, our team. And, and, and that can be done if you're not on a team through your office or through your, your brokers or, or your managing brokers, just like find your people everyone be foot soldiers in the world, come back and report, learn from each other, grow, strengthen, all that stuff really sets you up for the future. And right now, um, I'm in this, the, the mindset now coming out, coming out of it or wherever we are now, and that's open for a, a great amount of interpretation is that I'm, I'm, I'm on a professional level, deeply sort of grateful for the moment um, because, because it, it has brought with it some opportunity and some reflection um, I think we were in sort of a grind and I think it's so good to step outside of that from a head mindset perspective and, 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 and reassess. Um, again, change is good. So, so I'm, I'm oddly grateful for the pause on some level. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to again uh, move into other areas that we, that we wanted to but didn't, did, just couldn't find time to do it. And I'm also just cautiously, um, I'm cautious because I'm worried about this disease. I'm worried about this virus. I'm worried that it's all it's all in route rolling rolling out too quickly, and it and it puts in mind. Um, I won't go deep into this, but the two things that are just really front of mind for me right now as it relates to like this week in particular, like the showings on our listings are blowing up, and it's really um, interesting to me. And and it puts in mind just two things, which is like I, I really I want to say to all our buyers agents, anybody representing buyers, like if you set a time show up at that time like don't we we can't like vacillate on times anymore because if showing times are, are backed up and you know we're dealing with covid and you know people don't want to overlap like no more like oh i'm 15 minutes late like none of that like people have to show up on time right now because because people's health are is at risk if you don't and the second thing is i'm really struggling with pricing right now and 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 i will i will just deep dig in and i'm really deeply um committed right now as long as I can be to transparent pricing because I really don't like the idea of somebody pricing something at 995 that's worth 1.3 because I know that there's a lot of bodies moving through space and into houses that are that have a cap at 1.1 or 1.15 we're not going to get that house so we're so I'm I'm really worried on just a core core level of of like public safety that pricing things low is not a good idea right now and I I don't want to create discord or judgment in our industry. I understand that people have to do what their fiduciary you know, re responsibility entitles them to do with their client. And sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So I don't want to judge anyone for whatever practice they're doing. But like, I'm really into transparent pricing right now, just because personally, I feel like it's the right thing to do. Well, and it's just really high top of mind for me right now. It protects public safety. I mean, I'll, I'll judge. <laughs> oh, you'd be the judge. Be the I mean, I think anyway, it's really, I think it's an important issue. I, I got off topic there, but I just, should, it's just something that's really on my mind right now. Well, I, I, I got to tell you, I appreciate that because we need the voices like yours and Anthony's and others in our industry to speak up about these things because we're all doing the best we can to, to navigate this and to have someone say, 
doesn't make any sense to have that many bodies going through. You know, one of our agents, Brian Cheek, had a hundred disclosure packages out. Yeah. That's crazy. That's just crazy. So thank you for doing that. I really appreciate that. You know, let me ask you this, which I may have already asked it and you may have already said it, but throughout all of this time, the ups and the downs, the, oh my God, what is happening to, oh, you know what, let's take this time to read. What, what have you done? What have you specifically done? I mean, I stand on your head, light candles, I chant, I don't know. Do you have a practice? Is there something that's really helped you to navigate through this, this time where everything that we thought we knew and thought we understand is kind of getting dumped and we're having to reassess everything. What have, what have you guys done? And then I'll go to Anthony after you guys. After I, think David really, I think it's really important when you're in moments like this to take care of yourself, you know, and to really um, nurture yourself first, you know, because everything is coming through us to our loved ones and then to our business and our and our, our colleagues. So, you know, whatever, whatever any of us can do to, to nurture that, what brings us joy. For me, it's playing piano. I have a meditation practice. I've definitely been leaning into that more. Um, our son has been away for the last five and six weeks and not having him with us has caused me some, some stress. So I write him a lot. I write, you know, endlessly to him in the evenings to feel connected to him. I'm just trying to, you know, trying to kind of embrace myself in a way that I normally don't do when we're running around kind of we wake up and we the, the alarm clock goes off and we run till we go to bed that's what real estate agents do that's what people in the bay area do so i'm trying to slow down a little bit i'm trying to really kind of protect some time for myself um you know it's 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 challenging i mean i think it's going to continue to be challenging because i'd love to get back to the gym that was something i really loved doing and i don't have that anymore and i've put on 10 pounds since i've been sheltering in place making bread which is another passion of mine a new discovered passion so i'm making lots of bread so i need to stop making bread maybe and you know work out in the driveway but um you know i think just clearing out your mind periodically because again how we think so much of it is fear-based and judgment-based and we don't really know so kind of being able to step out of that a little bit and just give yourself some fresh air to to kind of settle in and 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 protect yourself a little bit and i think you know again it's i think we're all in a moment where we're all in a 12-step program it's one day at a time and we have to really meet each day each moment you know, knowing where we are in our bodies, how we're feeling, and taking really good care of ourselves. And if we do that, we'll be able to weather it, and we'll be able to take care of our families and our colleagues really well. We know how to do business, right? We just need to kind of protect our energetics in this very kind of tender moment. Yeah, that's excellent. How about you, David? What are you said, I don't have anything to add to that. I mean, actually, this time is just, I mean, this time has also given me a little bit of time to meditate and do things. I'm, I'm just a work, workaholic, long kind of guy. And this has been a really healthy reminder to me to just slow down and get in my body and, 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 and breathe. And I'm, and I'm really, um, I'm, I, there have been a few of those elements that I'm hanging on to even this week when we're so crazy busy. So I'm going to really try to forge that and get that, get that in because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling healthier in my body than I have in some time because of those those moments of reflection and med, you know meditation and quiet so I need to keep that front of mind and keep it keep it in my day-to-day -day routine and when David um, when I was baking bread and gaining 10 pounds David was doing a cleanse losing 10 pounds so we went from 10 pounds here <laughs> to 10 pounds here so you know I'd say on that level you trumped me in taking care of yourself <laughs> you had a lot of good bread though you had a lot of good bread you missed a lot of good bread and the jam too <laughs> I love it. So about, how about you, Anthony? Is there anything specifically that you've done, any practice, like started walking more, eating better? I don't know. Whatever it is that helped your mindset and helped you to stay uh, more centered. Before I answer that, I'll say I would not make a good prisoner. <laughs> uh, 
being a prisoner to this beautiful house and rear gardens. Uh, I still felt like a prisoner. And so I have not adapted that well to it. Of course, you want to like, when do, when do we ever have time for massage? Well, no one can touch your body when you're this in the, during this period, right, for massage. Then I'm going to be too busy. So I miss this kind of window. So I've been thinking about a lot of other things that like improve me, but I can't do them like, you know, for Andrew, like going, if he goes to the gym, you know, he's, the gyms are closed. So, you know, a lot of those things. But um, personally, I have picked up the phone. I have dialed people. I like surprise a lot of people. I've actually gotten on classmates.com to look at my high school class. What happened to them? Where are they now? And just, just, just a lot of things. But pick up the phone call. You know, I have a cousin that has, you know, her cancer returning after 16 years, you know, and um, makes me very thankful. And then we've lost friends in New Orleans and my buyer's agent lost his father to COVID. So, you know, there's a lot of other things that have just come at you and makes prison life even worse because of tragedy and death. And the one thing that um, I personally have done, you know, I have very high self-esteem. I could really honestly care less what XYZ says or if they come in with their bad attitude at my broker's tours all the time. Those things never really get to me because I have a high self-esteem, but it became a low self-esteem uh, at the beginning of this. So how do you get out of that? So that takes me back to business. And that was... Uh, you know, we still kept uh, contextually as our database. So it was improving the database because if you don't have something every agent can do that doesn't require money. And when you come out, when we come out of this or those of us that are coming out of it, if you don't have a clean database, how are you going to share all that great knowledge and suffering that you went through and suffering without a paycheck and you need one. So you need to be building those relationships. So when Contaxi was acquired by Compass. I trusted them that there would be a high firewall and they are not contacting my database. So I just wasn't ready to leave Contaxually. Some people may have, but we kind of helped Contaxually in the early days get the bugs out of their program when we met them at a Tom Ferry event 10 years ago. So it, it worked for us to prompt us to do things, right? We're not a drip campaign. It's not our style up here. And um, so I worked on the database and then Christine and I have worked on my new listing presentation. So we had to address and we're addressing um, what it was on a month by month basis, depending on when I'm doing a listing appointment. But I am doing a cumulative days of March 1 through May 31st compared to those months in 2019. So sellers can see, yes, things are selling, but they may not be at the same final price that they were during those days. So I've been doing things to establish mindset coming out of here because there's been so much. Sellers' minds are running loose. God, they can't even have an open house. How could they sell my house? Uh, the agents are like, I haven't seen the property because you have to have gloves and, and a mask on and send in this form to gain access to preview the house. So I'm looking at photos like you. Yeah, let's go see it. So, you know, I've been trying to do some best practices here to come back out to get the, to get the swagger going again. And um, so far it's working. Um, I will say to those out there that are probably not in the top 30 agents or so in sales production, uh, it can be tough coming out of this because a lot of sellers, not buyers for the most part, but sellers are looking for those agents who have gone through a struggle before, who have, they've seen how, what good job they've done on their listings and marketing, presenting their listings and selling X amount over during the heyday. So they're looking to those agents. I don't think, of course, I never take it for granted that I'm not in competition, but I do believe that they are starting to hone in coming out of this with agents that they value that they have great final results and they're great listing agents. And I'm afraid cracking that barrier could potentially be difficult for someone new. And that's not the intended purpose of bragging because we need a new group of agents to 
replace us when that day comes, right? But just a word of advice that don't be discouraged out there if you're not getting called by your client that you put into the house when you represent them as a buyer that they chose another listing agent. Either A, your fault for not staying in touch with them, or B, they're being extra cautious that they want a kind of a proven known person there. Also a great time to work with buyers, right? I mean, yes. you know, I think it's a really, really opportune time to shift into um, finding buyers, quite frankly. I mean, we have buyer agents on our team and we're really encouraging a lot of um, penetration into the, into the community to try to find the new buyers because there's going to be opportunities for them down the line. Yeah. Interest, rates are, interest rates are super low and, um, you know, there's so much opportunity there. And, and obviously, you know, good listing agents were, you know, good buying agents, right? I mean, first, right? We start with buyers and they turn into listings when they go to sell their homes. So I think, you know, I just really want to encourage younger agents on this call to um, not get discouraged, to really just kind of delve into your sphere and um, continue to, you know, expand your sphere of influence so that, um, you know, you'll be called on in the moment when somebody's out there looking for a home. Yeah. So let me ask you this. I'll ask you, David and Andrew, because Anthony, you already kind of hit on it and then you can expand on it some more. So you said you met with your team every week. Anthony, David, Andrew, what are you guys doing? Are you getting coaching for yourselves? Are you coaching your team members? Are you having team meetings? Is there kinds of trainings you're going to or, you know, just kumbaya sessions? I don't know. I'm just asking, what are you doing for yourselves and your team? I, 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 it's a hard one to answer. We do coach. We, talk, we coach with Tom Ferry and with a gentleman named Bill Pipes, who's really good. He's, he's very good at, some, at, at a lot of things. I mean, what, what we get out of Tom Ferry more than anything is sort of org charts and accountability and, and that business structure stuff. I find, um, I find the, the, this is just going to get really personal though. And, and everything, every, this is just my, my sort of secret, secret sauce or my recipe, but I find a lot of the sort of systematized things don't work for me. So, so, so what I'm, what I'm doing a lot of right now, I think what we're doing a lot of is just really listening and feeling because I, I always feel like, um, and this has been a tried and true sort of uh, philosophy of being in real estate from day one is like, whatever experience I'm having is not unique to me. It's probably fairly universal. So if I'm feeling something, it's probably universally being felt out there, I, I, I hope. So I'm just sort of like, I'm always looking, every choice we make from a marketing perspective or how we approach someone is always put through the lens of what I, what I enjoy, what I appreciate this approach or what I feel like someone's being predatory or solicitous of me. So like, that's always been a thing for me. And so, so, so this has been a moment for me of just like getting as quiet as possible and listening to what's happening in the news and what's happening. And, and again, I've said this on a couple of calls, so I won't go into it, but not being predictive, but just telling our clients what's happening, what we're experiencing, what people are feeling, all that sort of stuff has value. Because, and you start to become a bit of a, a bit of a, um, you know, a, I, I don't know. I don't want to say thought leader because that's such an overused word. But if you, but if you can, if you can touch your sphere of influence your, or your database with just your knowledge of what's happening, they just appreciate it because there's so little information in the world right now. So little's getting to people, and there's been a, I think, a pretty a, a, a vacancy of leadership in this country of late. Sorry to get political, but I think that's uh, that's how I'm feeling, and so I'm I can't be alone in that feeling. <laughs> so, um, so, no, you're not. <laughs> so, so listening and, 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 and reflecting that back out and then also just sort of getting into core values, who are we and, and, and how do we get that message out there about who we are and what we represent and what we value and what we believe, like that's been a, a twist on all this, it's like how do we get that message out there since we're not meeting people at open houses and all that. But I, I just want to get to the overarching point, which is I, I personally think success in real estate comes from like trying to figure out where you fit in the market and who are the people are that, that will that will respond to you and what is your self what is your value proposition who are you what do you believe in and i think this is just a moment to get deep in that like what are you and what is your value proposition where do you fit into the market especially if you're a new or a young agent like everything's changing you can redefine you can do whatever you want right now everything is being scrambled 
So like take this opportunity to like find your track and get in there, but make sure it's like authentically you and who you are and what you value and what you want to be doing with your time and all those good things. Cause if you, if you can sort of align your mindset with like your value system and, and what you believe and all that, and then, and then, and then lead from there, I, I just believe things will come, will come your way. And just to kind of, tag on to that. I mean, I think it's really important to have mentors in life. In oh, every, yeah. every step of every day of your life, it's great to have mentors, personal mentors, spiritual mentors, professional mentors. I mean, they, in relationships with people who push us and force us to be our better selves. So, you know, to coaching, I mean, I, I, and again, coaching costs money, but there are ways to have mentors for free. Um, Keller Williams, you know, I don't want to plug Keller Williams here, but Keller Williams has an incredible mentorship program. It's one of the reasons we're part of the organization. We really believe ethically and, and spiritually, you know, we're aligned with them in terms of giving back and supporting one another. So, you know, find people in your life that inspire you and push you and, and help you be better and stronger and smarter. You should find that in any brokerage. Any, any brokerage, any, brokerage any, any, any enterprise, any yeah. relationship, right? But I think it's so important. Yeah. Um, you know, as we grow older, I'm growing older, you know, I want, I want mentors who are going to inspire me, you know, to be, you know, a certain way when I'm 80. You know, and, and without having those people, how do I, you know, I want a roadmap. It gives us a roadmap. It gives us a place to see where we are, to, 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 to know where we want to go, and someone to help us and lead us to that place. So, you know, I, I just can't, I mean, we've been, we've been in therapy together as a couple. We've been coached for the last seven years by Bill Pipes, who's helped us transform our business into a team. I mean, it's just, it always helps. It always helps. Yeah. I, I'll tell you, I talk to a lot of really big producing agents and very successful business people. All the top people have multiple coaches, not just one, two, three, or four for every area, financial, business, spiritual, mm -hmm. emotional, physical. That has been the common thread I've seen in all of them. And I always say, I don't care what your practice is, just get one. Right. Just do something. You know, don't just sit there and feel sorry for yourself and be a victim. Go and do something. Okay. So I asked about you. Uh, what are you doing now to support your team? You talked about it. You meet every week. And for yourself, is there something specific and then we'll go on to some other questions I want to hit before we run out of time. Did you hear me, Anthony? I, I didn't know who it was directed to. I thought it was me. So I heard the question. So, yeah. Um, a couple of things before I forget. Um, uh, it goes along what uh, David was saying is, you know, when I go in now, I'm much calmer. When I go in for a listing appointment, not just the, mm, you know, that drive, I'm going to get it, the, the old salesman type way. I walk in and I'm much calmer. And I ask them, uh, what have they heard about the marketplace? So I don't start talking yet. I've changed that around and I say, what have you heard about the marketplace? Because who knows what they've heard. And then I can go from there. So that's how I've changed the initial walk-in that I ask them that question because if they start listening to me and I start telling them where I think it is and where it's going to go and what happened during COVID and coming out of it, does it last until the end of October when the flu season hits with COVID and we're back in this again? I mean, I want them to, to tell me what they've heard about it before going and that gives them a chance to talk and what you'll probably get is a lot of their fears coming out, um, their lack of knowledge that you can go and address when it's your time to have the conversation. So that's changed. And another thing is I started last year um, turning down people during the listing process that became a new personality, shall we say, came out from the sellers and turning out not to be nice people. So I have turned down listings upwards to $3.2 million and said, even though we've worked together for X, Y, Z, I really don't think I'm the agent for you anymore. And, um, and I'm so glad I do that because 
I look at the people that have inherited those and one is a very nice woman and I called her up and I said, oh, you know, I'm not trying to trash the people or your listing, but you know, five years was long enough for them to bring this on. And then the wife started speaking up and becoming this really mean person. And I didn't really want that in my life. And uh, so I've reached out and said, good luck. If you need coaching advice on the side with them, if you need to vent, do so, but I haven't, I haven't even referred it to another agent out there. It's just kind of clean and walk away. Because if you do bring that kind of a client on, there goes Christine who's sitting beside me, my marketing manager. She's like, oh, I hate these people. And then your assistant goes, God, they're awful. And then here goes the whole team and we're all up in a tizzy for not doing, we're doing more than we probably should for this client, but it will never be enough. So I've, you know, brought calm into the team by uh, taking, away, taking away clients. And also that frees me up for time for when the gyms do open back up to go to the gym and other things. Stressful enough being a listing agent um, to get a house ready for its, you know, first open to the market. And um, I just like for my team to be strong and on the same page and to take out any of that negative stuff that I can do that I brought to the team because I thought it was great to have this $3.25 million listing and the sellers are going to drive us all crazy. So I think the word calm is the word that's coming out of this for coronavirus and um, that I'm still the leader of the team and the, you know, the, the, the captain of the ship. But, you know, involve your team and respect your team members' opinion a lot and listen to your team as well as your future listings. Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you, Anthony. You know, uh, I heard it said, and so I've been repeating it, you should never let a good worldwide pandemic go to waste. So I hate to say the gifts of the pandemic. So I've been saying the gifts of shelter in place since that because I don't want to give the pandemic any credit. What have been the gifts of shelter in place? What has it given you? Um, my mentor teacher asked me that. What five gifts have shelter in place given you? I could come up with a few right away, but it took some pondering. And so share with me, David, Andrew, what you have uh, feel like has been a gift of this and possibly something you're gonna change going from this point forward. Um, I know for me, one of the gifts is to show me I probably don't need to do a 12 hour day every day. That's always been my go-to, I'm like you, David. And I've come to realize I exhaust myself and then I, I don't have anything left for the rest of my life. So that's my gift, you know, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna work smart, not hard. But what about you guys? What, what gifts have shelter in place given you? What, what changes are you going to make? I'm going to remind you of that, Tina, when I see you at the office at 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> when we're back in the office, all right? I'll, I'll hold you to that one. Thanks, Andrew. I mean, for me, I, I think the greatest gift, again, it's, it, it, this is such an unusual moment. I mean, we are talking about, you know, an, an a human experience that everyone is having on the planet. I mean, when has that ever happened in our lifetime? So for me, it's about, it's about making deeper connections with people. You know, it, it's, it, we're not having, you know, silly conversations right now, right? We're, we're digging deep, we're, we're, we're exposed, we're vulnerable. Um, David and I, we ha our house, we started a, a home renovation project um, about two months before, before COVID hit. So we have been sitting in our house while it's being torn apart. Um, our son is in a wilderness program because he was struggling. So he is being torn apart internally, you know, in doing some deep work. You know, that has been hard for our family. So I feel like you know, the gift of, of, of sheltering in place, the gift of COVID is it's torn me apart, you know, literally. And it's given me some time and opportunity to sit with that and to look at that and 
see what I want to be when I put all of that back together. So for me, it's, it's like mining. It's an opportunity to mine jewels, you know, as an individual, spiritually, professionally, you know, my relationship with David. Um, you know, it's just, it's hammers and guns and, you know, it's, it's just like crazy over here, ha you know, nail guns going off and, and it just reminds me that this is a transformative moment, you know, it, 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 in so many different ways and transformation is painful and it's exciting and there's just so much opportunity into, in it. So I would just say to everyone listening, you know, look inside you know, take time and, and see, see we, our lives are limited. You know, we, 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 we are born and we die and it's very painful getting in here and it's very painful getting out. So let's make sure that we're making every moment count. And this is a reminder for everyone on this planet to really look at that, you know, in personal and spiritual and professional ways. So, I, I, you know, that's a great gift. And um, I'm, I'm taking it really seriously and, and doing some hard work right now. Boy, my answer was going to be Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> you are good on Zoom. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think when you look in the mirror, you're waiting for the box to outline your face and to come off and on and... Yeah. <laughs> Go on. No, I mean, uh, I was, I was going to say on a business level, I like Zoom. Uh, I'm sick of Zoom, but boy, I'm not going to take many of those meetings and conference rooms anymore. And that's a nice time saver. Um, but, but, um, but more personally and, and more in the vein of what the beautiful thing that Andrew just shared is that I've just really enjoyed this time with our daughter who's home from college. I, I know she hasn't really enjoyed being home from college. I know I'm liking it a lot more than she is, but I'm loving having her home. It's so fun. This is like a this is like a chapter that we didn't ever expect to get, and we got it. It's just mm -hmm. it's like because of the reasons Andrew's describing, like the relationship has deepened, uh, and and that feels so great. So that's 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 the gift of, of shelter in place for me personally. I love it. That's so beautiful, <laughs> Anthony, my dear. What has been a gift of the shelter in place, and what changes are you making going forward because of that? Well, it's not going to be. It's going to be more business question oriented. I don't want to retire. Is what I've realized. I could not <laughs> stay in this house. Uh, <laughs> I just got to get out, so I'm not going to retire. And so what is the fine line of if you do scale your back? So my income year to date um, is down about 30%. And at the end of July, I think I'll be down 20%. So what if you don't make one point what million dollars in salary? salary? What if it is 750? That's a huge number um, to live on. And so I'm not so caught up in who's number one or number two or number three, even though I want to do my best production. But I definitely don't want to retire. And it's made me think when I do retire, what do I want to do? So I think this has shown me that can you handle retirement? Because Lee is retired from obstetrics and gynecology. And I reads a lot. Well, I don't read a lot. So we do everything else together very well. Travel, eat the right, eat the same foods, all of that. But one of the things that I'm disappointed in the entire year is that I made a commitment last year that Lee and I were going to travel more this year. Well, that got thrown out the door. I mean, we had things booked for France, um, Ireland, we had up and down the coast that we haven't seen some cities by living here in California. Um, so that went out the door and I'm not, I just want to know, is that going to be a part of my 2021 or can I squeeze something in with COVID where it's safe and normal? Um, the other thing that I've enjoyed to a certain extent is that the kids are all at home. And we have a lot of young people in our neighborhood, and sometimes I wish they weren't in the backyard all day long screaming, but hey, that's okay. They're home, and it kind of reminds me of growing up in Tennessee that people are, their kids are walking to another house with the mask on. I personally wouldn't send another kid to another person's house, but uh, I feel overall that people are back to being nicer to their neighbors. They're not as frantic. 
you know, the husband's home from work and he's walking the dogs. I'm like, I've never seen the husband of this couple. And so I'm hoping that some of that neighborhoodiness that has always existed in Crocker Highlands with our sidewalks and walkability in, within the neighborhood, not just to Lakeshore, I hope it keeps getting better and better and better because it's nice to know that it always has been a good neighborhood. It's nice to know that the younger couples are making it a better neighborhood. I think it's, called, it's taught them, you know, the, the millennials, the millennials that work too hard or, or uh, just are on, their, just are on their, and their iPhone all the time. They're in the backyard actually talking to their kids and their iPhone's not in the backyard. You know, I don't know if that's gonna be able to continue, but it would be nice as a society um, to see more of that happening. But um, that's it. That's well, it. I, thank you. That's, I'm with you. I, I can't picture sitting home and being all the time. So retirement doesn't sound interesting. So does anybody on this call have any questions? All you have to do is unmute yourself. I'd love to hear from you. If not, I'm going to ask a couple of more, but I wanted to make sure I hit on anything or put it in the chat box, either one. Um, we have over 60 people on the call, so just wanted to make sure if you have anything that you'd like them to address. So. To kind of bring this on home, I, I asked, what advice would you give to our age community regarding navigating their business and clients do this, also their mental and physical well-being? What advice would you give them if you were to give them advice? And, uh, you know, obviously everybody's unique and different, but there are things you're doing that are working. And it's the people like you that are showing how it's being done and coming at it with humanity and authenticity. And you are our role models, our, our guides. So um, I'll start with you, Anthony. What kind of advice would you give to these agents? You know, I'm with David all about Zoom. I think the nice thing about Zoom is um, when you say call your past clients or call your sphere, isn't it nice to know that you're maybe seeing some of the gardens from the breakfast room that I'm in now? Um, you can do it in your library, your living room. Make the phone calls as opposed to, you know, the, the iPhone that I don't ever use where, you know, FaceTiming. It just doesn't work for me. So Zoom is really nice. So I think people are always in tune with their laptop. That means they're home. It means they're settled. And it's nice to schedule a 30 minute Zoom meeting or a 20 minute Zoom meeting with people. I, that is so what I would do because it's very comfortable to see Andrew and David in, in their home, uh, much more inviting. Can you imagine getting a call from them to your house? Like, isn't that nice? Look at their kitchen, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you put them in not so heavy of a business mode. We always say don't call for, hey, I need a referral, you know, I need another listing, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't that work well? And they can, you know, you can bring up your business at some point into it, but they leave it. Now they have a really good visual as opposed to, oh yeah, I got this call from so-and-so today. So I tell everyone to be a master of Zoom in this, in this world today. I mean, I certainly do that. One of the things I've already mentioned is clean up your database so you're ready for when it is really booming. Clean it up, uh, get it manageable, put everybody in the right bucket of where they should be. And, you know, I'm finding that it's nothing better than a nice thank you note during COVID when someone's dropped off food um, to the house. Uh, it's really nice to say, I'm not going to text her back for that. And so, you know, I bought some thank you cards. And it's nice, it's nice to do a little bit of old school. It doesn't hurt, particularly during these times. We've kind of turned the clock back on a lot of this crazy 24 by 7. So you might as well ride that wave too and be in tune with what's happening there. I love it. The personal touch. That is really great advice. David, Andrew, what, what advice would you give to our, our lovely community here? You know, I, I, I coach a bunch of people on our team and, you know, we have 
people in our industry are very motivated and, and very driven. I mean, it requires that to be successful in real estate. And I would suggest that, you know, if it's slowing down a little bit and you're not too terrified of, of, of income drop, you know, do, do some personal work, you know, take care of yourself. You know, if you play piano, play piano more, you know, I mean, enjoy the time because it's not going to last and it's all going to come roaring back and, you know, we'll probably forget it ever happened. And we'll, you know, Tina, you'll be in the office at eight o'clock at night and I'll be going, you said you weren't going to do that and I'll be there with you. Um, so, you know, I would say try to, try to extract as much time for yourself um, to just kind of take care of yourself because um, it's needed right now. And I agree with Anthony. I mean, database management, you know, it's a great time to, 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 to do all those things that you never have time to do, right? I, I'm shocked how I haven't done that because there's so many things right now that, you know, under normal circumstances, I think if COVID hadn't hit, I would have been attacking and I, it's kind of derailed me in some ways. But, um, you know, the other thing that really concerns me in this moment with lack of open houses is how buyer agents are going to get buyers. Because, you know, that's predominantly been done face-to-face, -face, you know, energetic to energetic. We find the people we like in the world and we want to work with one another. So, yeah. you know, starting to think about how to engage in, in finding buyers. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm trying deeply, deep, deep work right now with our team. Like, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? You know, because I fear, I fear that a lot of the buyers are going to be coming to listing agents directly now. And listing agents are going to have an opportunity to kind of capture more of the buyers out in the marketplace. So how do we circumvent that to, you know, make sure that buyer agents are, are getting buyers? And again, I think that's really tapping your sphere in meaningful ways, you know, communicating with them on a regular basis without being predatory um, so that when they hear of somebody, they'll recommend you. Um, you know, making sure that people know that referrals are, I mean, we know this in our business, referrals are everything, but, you know, our clients, how many times has, has one of us had a dear friend go, oh my God, my, one of my best friends just bought a house. I didn't even tell them to, you know, work with you, you know, so asking all of those people on a regular basis, really important now, you know, referrals mean more than they've ever meant and, and really reaching out in that way. Uh, other than that, I don't know. I would just add that we're in a moment um, I mean, I'm always looking for ways to connect with people, um, obviously, and, uh, and, and, and marry that with the just broader um, concept of care that pervades everything that we do in real estate. So just, I think that the one thing that you can do right now to build trust is to take a moment at the beginning of any relationship to find out what their mindset is oh, to this virus. You know, how are they feeling about it? How do they want to be approached? Do they want to be in a car? How, just really, I think you have to make that one of the first questions you have so they can, so that you can meet them where they are as it relates to this virus in particular. And I think when they hear that question that you're trying to make sure that they're comfortable and that the rules are very set around what they, I mean, the, the county has guidelines. That's not everybody's personal guideline. So finding out where people live within their sort of concern about their own health and their, this disease is a, is a good upfront way to build trust right now and to build a connection with people. So don't, 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 don't assume, that it would be really tragic to assume that someone's sharing your point of view or is fine with the county guidelines the way they are. Like, don't make any assumptions about that. Really get into where they are with this, with this disease and, and, and how, how they wish to be approached and, and, and handled. And that will, um, that will I, I assume, elevate them in your mind right away. Elevate you in their mind right away. Yes. That is excellent. Well, you guys, we have hit our two o'clock hour. I do want to thank you. That was excellent. And uh, for me, it was very soul fulfilling. And so remember everyone, if you want to be really loving, take care of yourself first. That's the most loving act you can give to your people, to your family, to yourself, of course. So thank you, David, Andrew, Anthony. Thank you so much and uh, loved having you on the panel. And I look forward to seeing all of you two, uh, Thursday at two o'clock. And we'll be announcing, I'm gonna start calling and inviting the new panelists and the new topic, I'll announce it as soon as I can. So thank you, thank you, Andrew, David, Anthony. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, thank you, thank you. Right. Thank you, Tina.
My pleasure.